Six years have passed since that horrendous incident. I received special training via a secret organization working under the direct control of the president. I was to assume the responsibility of protecting the new president's family. Cornel, why am I the one who always gets the short end of the stick? You. Who are you, really? Come on and tell us. The biggest change is that the game now has a fully polygonal engine, characters, and backgrounds. We've also gone from a fixed camera to a rear camera, more of a first-person perspective. The actual controls themselves haven't really changed all that much, although this time Leon will be able to aim for specific body parts like the head, arms, stomach, or legs. I've worked on a number of Resident Evil titles in the past, and honestly, I think the series had been recycling the same patterns, the same gameplay each time. The creators were starting to get bored with it, and many moved to other projects. So I spoke to Mikami-san, the director, and we talked about reshaping the series and winning back the fans, as well as winning over new fans who thought they would never play a Resident Evil game. So, in order to revitalize the series, we've given it a complete makeover. There are a lot of things that are brand new to the Resident Evil series. You can use the action button to jump over things, get in vehicles, jump out of windows, fight enemies, things like kicks and throw moves, stuff like that. Earlier Resident Evil games have all been in everyday settings, allowing you to see your environment crumble around you. But with this game, you're entering a completely isolated world. We've tried to represent that and convey the different kind of fear you would feel. Up until now, we've made our pre-rendered backgrounds very intricate and detailed. But now we have actual moving backgrounds and we're focusing more on the presence, the realism, and having fun moving around. The biggest thing, of course, would be that the environments are really expansive. We also had to integrate the indoor and outdoor areas, blending each area or section of the game seamlessly. This was quite a challenge. With this game, we're using non-English dialogue, mainly Spanish, for the first time. And I think that really helps make the atmosphere of the game new and fresh. And, of course, we also worked very hard on the sounds for the guns. I hope players listen, especially to the first handgun you start off with, and appreciate the work we put into making the sounds. That's right, there are no zombies this time around. Instead, you'll see some new enemies. Leon is confronted by a strange group of villagers, but these villagers aren't really human. They are these awful creatures. You'll have to play the game and solve the mystery to find out what they really are. The enemies aren't really zombies, and actually, at first glance, they look like humans. Their movements are much quicker, so they're like humans, but not really. Kind of like subhumans. For some of the voices, I used people from inside the company and got some voices from recording sessions. I then mixed in some animal sounds, growling and such. Overall, it was a bit of a challenge to create these voices that were both human and inhuman at the same time. Well, they're more human than the zombies were, in that they're smarter, they use tools and various weapons, and they attack in groups. When we were working on the villager enemies, we were very pleased and thought they would be very scary. But to add a little spice or a little extra shock, we started thinking, how about adding a big weapon, something really impressive? So we came up with the idea for the chainsaw. Well, six years have passed and we have Leon from Resident Evil 2 as an agent for the American government heading to Europe on a solo mission to rescue Ashley, the president's kidnapped daughter. He arrives thinking he can just rush in, save her and get right out, but suddenly gets attacked by these villagers. After fighting and getting captured, he finally makes his way to where Ashley is being held and they attempt to escape together. 
In the process, you'll find out who these people are and why they're doing what they're doing, and the mysteries surrounding Leon and Ashley themselves. Well, compared to Resident Evil 2, there are a lot more story-setting elements to work with. Now Leon's more experienced, so I made him a little tougher than before to reflect that. But at the same time, I also wanted to maintain that coolness about him, so I didn't want to make him too buffed out. For the lighting, we were able to use the GameCube's processing power, with lots of effects like fog, and focus on creating a believable atmosphere. Also, the differences between daytime and nighttime are dramatic. During the day, you can see enemies easier. There's literally evil in the air. But at night, it's dark and, of course, a lot harder to see. And maybe you'll see the darker, more vicious side of things. I'm sorry, but that's sort of a secret. You'll have to play the game to find out. However, I can say that the music is different from anything heard in previous games, so expect a totally different experience this time around. Since there are a lot of different looking enemies in the game, we tried to think of creative ways to portray them in a more realistic manner, and that really comes out in the camera work. So we spent a lot of time and effort in making the total finished product, especially the cutscenes, where new enemies are introduced, really feel realistic to the player. When trying out this new camera, there was a lot of trial and error, seeing how close to or how far from the character would work the best. We've also added letterbox to certain scenes to make it more cinematic, more dramatic. So even though it's 3D, you don't have the abrupt movements making people sick. Plus, with a narrower view, there's more tension, and by being up close, it's easier to feel like you're right there in the game. So I think simply changing the camera has added a lot of drama to the game. Actually, we experimented with a new mocap system this time around. In the past, we had always worked with our own internal Capcom system. This time, we were able to use more sophisticated cameras that were more precise, and I feel as a result, we were able to get a lot of high-quality stuff. Of course, when we do motion capture, that only records body movements, not the face. So what we did was take the dialogue we recorded in America and had each animator animate the facial expressions by hand for each scene. And I think we've been able to achieve some great results. Compared to Resident Evil Zero and the remake of the first Resident Evil, this game features a lot more action elements. I think everyone should be able to play through, solving all the puzzles and having a good time through to the end. I really hope you get to play and see everything the game has to offer. This is an all new Resident Evil. So whether you gave up on the series, have never played it before, or have been patiently awaiting this game since the last one came out, I feel it has turned out very well. So, if you're a fan of games, this game is a lot of fun, and I encourage you to try out this new action-packed chapter in the Resident Evil series. Thank you. Okay, it's game time. 
Resident Evil 4.